So he was going before me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I go into his office and I'm, I said, okay, Dave, this is all going to sound like lies, but everything I'm telling you is true. Yeah. So I go into the office and I'm like, so where do I meet you? How do, how do I get there? You know? And he's like, okay, yeah, great, great question. So he takes out a half a piece of notebook paper. He's like, you're going to fly from Minneapolis to, um, I'm trying to think of where I flew now. I flew from Minneapolis to Tokyo, Tokyo to Bangkok, Bangkok to a place called Jashur in, in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. and then from Jashur to a place called Dhaka. I think it's the capital. <laughs> he's like, when you get out, when you when you're get done with Dhaka, he's like, you're going to take a cab down to this town. And he's like, and then I'll, no, I went from Dhaka. I'm sorry, I flew into Dhaka. Then I went from Dhaka to Jashur. Mm -hmm. So he's like, in Jashur, I'll find you. I'll That's find, it, I'll I'll find, find you. you. I'll find you. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I flew from Minneapolis to Tokyo. I was in Tokyo for just a couple of hours, flew to Bangkok. I was, I overnighted in Bangkok, which was, it's just gnarly. Just mm -hmm. all the people and just mm -hmm. everything. I, it was insane. And I got to my hotel at like three o'clock in the morning, slept for a couple of hours. The next morning flew to Dhaka, getting off the airplane in Dhaka. I was like, well, first of all, I talked to his wife before I left. And um, her name is Francie Cuthbert. And I talked to her and I was like, so Francie, what's Bangladesh like? And she said, well, no one goes there on vacation. Mm -hmm. I was that's like, it. that's oh, not a good tagline. Yeah. 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 She's like, no one would travel there unless they're doing something in the militarily or doing research. Mm -hmm. No one would go there. I was like, oh, okay. And I get off the airplane and I see like, I mean, it was, it was a bad dream. It was machine guns. Everyone had a machine mm. gun. Tons of screaming. It, I was, just felt like I was in a horrible, horrible movie. Yeah. Right, right, getting off the airplane, you know, and I was like, everyone that was holding machine guns seemed really pissed off, <laughs> and everyone that was getting off the airplane, if they weren't, like, the Bangladeshis just seemed to, like, go about their business, but, like, you know, and I was the only, only white guy in the airplane, right. like, by times 10. So it's going to be easy to find. I was the only white guy in the airport yeah. times 10. You're like, oh, this is how it'll <laughs> Easy find to find you. <laughs> this is how it'll find yeah. you. I'll find That's you. That's how it <laughs> So I, you know, and I went up to the security guard, and he had an AK, and he's screaming at me. And so I didn't kind of negotiate my way through security because they didn't want to let me in the country at all. Mm. And so um, then my professor says, you go from this airport he goes, you'll see these big gates, and it'll be these towers with machine guns. He's like, go through the gate, walk over to the domestic airport. You're in the international airport. you got to walk to the domestic airport, and then you take a domestic flight down to Jashur. Mm. And I was like, okay. So I start walking through these gates, and one of the security guards is like, hey, 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 where are you going? I'm like, I'm walking to the, to the domestic airport. He's like, they'll kill you. You go out this gate, they'll shoot you dead. And I was like, okay, so how do I get there? <laughs> He's like, you have to get in a car, and then the car will drive you around. I'm oh like, okay, gosh. I'll do that. So I go over to the car. Again, this is all true. And there's a guy in a cab, and he, I can't even get him to give me eye contact. Mm -hmm. like, he's sitting at the car. He's Bangladeshi, and I'm, excuse me, and he's just like, will not even look out his window. Security guard comes over. He's like, is there a problem? I go, I, I just, he's not responding to me. Security guard goes over, or a policeman, whatever, goes over to the cab smashes the cab driver in the head with his elbow maybe two or three times, maybe twice. Boom, boom. Guy's bleeding from the temple, and he's like, he'll take you now. <laughs> and I got in the back seat, and the dude drove me to the airport and didn't even collect any fare, and I got out, and I was like, how much? And he just <laughs> drove off. Oh. Damn, Donnie. Was it? I mean, do you think it was just because you were a white <laughs> Damn, guy? Donnie. You were an American? Do you think, or is just, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I don't think it had anything to do with my skin color. I mean, everyone there, I mean, literally, it was a sea of eyes going, you know, because mm. I don't even know if some some of them have seen, you know, wow. a white guy, you know. And, wow. And uh, mm. then I went and got in the domestic, and you're, like, you're getting on the airplane, you're like, this thing's not taking off. No. Right. Like, there's no yeah. freaking way. Like, you go, you come from an airplane in the United States, yeah, uh, uh, in Japan, in Bangkok, like, everything is... Pretty good. No one waits in line other than Americans. We're right. the only ones that go orderly fashion, but all the airplanes are, yeah, this is fine. You and know? and I mean, at no time do you ever think, 
uh, I need to turn back. Like, I didn't know. No, no, no. I'm uh, going. Like, maybe. I'm freaking going. <laughs> How old were you at this point again? 20? Yeah, in my 20s. Yeah. In my 20s. And um, and then I, so I flatted you sure. I get, and then I take a car down to this area that he told me, like, this region to be in. And I get there, and it's, like, mm, one thirty in the morning. Mm-hmm. This guy comes over to me again. This is a true story. Guy comes over to me on a rickshaw. You know, the, you know, yeah, a motorcycle or what yeah, is it? Uh, like a three wheeled bike. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he's going to pedal me and he goes, yeah, can I, where, where can I take you? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm waiting right here. I'm supposed to wait right here. He's like, no, 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 you can't. He's like late at night. He's like, where, where do you need to go? I was like, no. And he's like, are you in a hotel? And I didn't even know if there was a hotel. And I said, no, I don't know. I'm just meeting a guy here. So he rode off and he came back two or two more times and asked me again, like, where can I take you? So I'm just sitting there at like two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, this is. Mm. I don't even know what's going on right now. And, and I'm exhausted, right? Because right. I've been traveling for a few days. And all of a sudden, here comes a Land Cruiser. And there's At a, two in the morning. Yep. There's a driver. There's my professor <laughs> and, and some other Bangladeshi biologists. And I was like, man, alive. So they picked me up. And, um, <laughs> and then I go, I go, yeah, I, you know, I'm so excited to see you guys. Like, this is unbelievable, you know? And, and I was like, yeah, that guy with the rickshaw over there, like, I could still see him. And I was like, yeah, he came two or three times. And the driver's like, Oh, he was going to murder you. Uh, he's like, yeah, oh. those guys are all, they're all thieves. And he's like, so if you would have gotten in the rickshaw, he's like, basically they just ride behind the buildings over here. He rings a bell. They guys jump out, stab you to death. And he's like, they take your bag. He's like, you have more money in your bag right now in gear than they can make in the next like 10 years. <laughs> he's like, they were going to murder you. Hey, did you happen to ask the professor, like, why didn't you tell me like <laughs> half of this shit? See, he, I... and it was all like, he gave me a half a piece of paper. And it's funny because I went and bought, and I feel like I might be embellishing this a little bit, but I went and bought a book on Bangladesh, on traveling in Bangladesh. Mm-hmm. And basically in the book, it said, don't take a bus, uh-huh. try not to fly, don't get in cabs. Like, it's basically like, don't travel in Bangladesh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, just, just don't, don't go don't here. Do, don't do this. Shortest book ever. <laughs> yeah. Because there's, they, they, there's a ton of kidnapping there. Yeah. So I was just like, man, alive. They kidnap. That's one of the things they do is they kidnap you for ransom. And if there's no ransom, they just, like anyone that's kidnapped is getting killed. Ugh. There's no, there's no light at the end of the side. So after that. So tigers were nothing. Yeah, yeah. tigers. Compared I mean, once this. we got into the jungle. Then it was you great. were safe. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was Shit. in the city. That's that's, that's great. Yeah. So that I, was I my first. But I, I even want. I want like you got us there. Now I even want to know. Like I've always been thrilled about specifically about animals that that can kill you. Can kill you. Oh yeah. Hey, you're or, or now you're in the jungle. Yes. What is your goal? What are you there for? So and I'll tell you right off the bat because everyone asks me and everyone's always super disappointed but i never even saw a tiger oh Mm. bummer but i was getting i was a few times i was basically like in this room with a tiger but i couldn't see them because the jungle was too thick so we could see where they had stepped and when they would step this is a place called the sunderbonds it's the world's largest mangrove swamp Mm -hmm. so it's a series of islands and channels and when a tiger would step they're um, prints they call pog marks would fill with water mm-hmm. so a few times we were in the jungle moving around we'd find a pog mark that was just dimpling with water the water was oh, just, just starting the, so it's within uh, like 30 seconds 20 seconds something like that. so he's right here Jeez. you know but I, it's just too thick to see him, see him. yeah it's it's dense dense, dense yeah. like it's a wall a physical wall plus mm. you can't go like there's Saltwater crocodiles and bull sharks and cobras. Not and gators, crocodiles. The crocodiles. Oh, yeah, the they'll ones. eat you. Like, I was washing my feet one day because we did everything from a boat. We lived on a boat. We lived on a boat that would sink. Every day we would have to bail this big boat out that we <laughs> lived on. Dude, I'm, I'm like. Dude, I'm you lost. won't even stay in a La Quinta, I'm lost. I'm lost. much like, less a, a boat. <laughs> you see me? I'm squirming over here, man. And then I we would get on these little things that looked like gondolas, and we would drive down all these canals. And basically, we were, every time a tiger would cross the canal, that was an event, right? Not seeing the tiger, but the tracks. Mm-hmm. So that would be an event. And then you see, okay, there's another event, another event. And basically, we're using all of these crossings to come up with some idea of what the population we think might be in this area of the Sunderbonds. Mm. They're trying to map out because the tigers are hunted still. They're poached and, you know, yeah. so like they're super endangered. There's more P 
people, a lot of people know the statistic, but there's more tigers in captivity in Texas mm. than live in the wild. 